Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tennis Channel Inside In. We're on the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. As always, Mitch Michaels from the Santa Monica Studio. We're in between legs of the Sunshine Double, Indian Wells in the rear view now with Miami Open. Joined by Tennis Channel analyst, former top 20 player, and uh, someone that enjoys playing in the United States of America, Jan Michael Gamble. Welcome back to the show. Mitch, thanks for having me. It's been, uh, it's been a fun start to the season. There's a lot to get to. Indian Wells was uh, exciting, and it had moments of, dare I say, changing of the guard feel. And it wasn't just the men's tour, which we're going to start with. The women's tour had some big results as well. It was exciting to see. But this did kind of feel like the first term where collectively some young blood was really felt throughout. Well, yes, I, I still think it's unfortunate we don't have uh, Novak at the tournament, unable to play, doesn't want to get the shot. Uh, you know, there's a whole thing. We've gone over that a million times. There's no reason to continue with it. But he wasn't able to enter the States, so not playing, didn't play in any wells, didn't, can't play in Miami. So with him not there, yeah, there's a bit of the changing mm-hmm. of the guard. Alcaraz has regained the number one ranking. Um, but uh, we're, we're missing Novak. No, I'm yeah. really interested in the scene when he does return to, to, to play, how that'll all turn out. I guess I was more looking at it like if you look at the semifinalists, even the quarterfinalists, mm. it was Sinner, it was Tiafo, it was Felix in there. You know, we saw Medvedev, obviously, who's 26, kind of the older of the bunch. But right. the group itself seemed young. Obviously, Novak is still a factor and still a force, probably the force. But, you know, it was more than just Alcaraz. I thought it was the depth of the youth starting to come up. Well, absolutely. And you have Medvedev on a 19-match winning streak. The yeah. guy's been playing. He's been playing yeah. in the last few weeks before this last tournament in Indian Wells. He's been playing the top tennis. He took out mm-hmm. uh, Djokovic, you know, in Dubai. So, you know, he's he's playing just unbelievable tennis. And uh, it's it's interesting to see how well he's played. It's interesting to see these guys with these amazing runs of matches, one in a row. Novak did it early in the year with the Australian, some other tournaments that he was able to come through and win. Um, and now Carlos is on a, obviously a, a match winning streak. He seems to be injury free again, which is yeah. it's, that's a big question mark for Alcaraz, isn't it? He's had a couple different injuries that keep creeping up. But to your point, again, you're right. All these guys playing well. It's an exciting crop of young players. Um, and, uh, you know, who's going to emerge as, as the, the true kind of front runner? So far, it's been Alcaraz. That was flawless from him. This, this tournament in isolation was as good as he's looked for a single event, didn't drop a set. It felt like, and I think Jim Courier made this point on the broadcast, it was tailor-made for him to do well here. The courts were perfect for a guy like him with the clay court background, the ability to hang in the rallies. He's such an incredible mover. I think what we saw, and, and we knew that he had these gifts, but the cerebral side to him, that's been the most jaw-dropping to me recently. The physical gifts notwithstanding, but his ability to adjust, to play different opponents tactically a little differently, that's what stood out in a terrific oppo- in a terrific run where he didn't drop a single set. Yeah, that's true. And he does have the ability, obviously, to track down so many balls from the baseline. His unbelievable speed and his ability to change direction uh, is one thing. But you have a very complete individual. He, he serves well, returns well. He returns offensively. He can return with some more heavy spin as well. Yeah, um, it just makes him very difficult on a court like that. It, he, you couldn't put him away, but he has the power yeah. to put his his opponents away. Yeah, Even Medvedev. I felt like Sinner didn't play that poorly. Felix didn't play that poorly. Medvedev could have obviously played a better match, but you know he is so tough to beat. Even when you have momentum against him, it's it's tough, especially to finish points. And you know you've been in the coaching circles as well. How would you approach, I mean, is there even a way that you would look at what he does? Because in a weird way, it doesn't seem like he's at his full potential, which is a scary thought. Well, that's the thing about Alcaraz. He just continues to get more and more confident. And he yeah. seems to be such a, a nice individual off mm-hmm. the court. So he just he puts it all out there on the court. He, he plays with so much passion. He loves the sport. He yeah. loves to compete. That in itself gets him a long way. Um, that is a tough thing to to substitute. You can't make a player have those kinds of good emotions, mm-hmm. good positive vibes that that he always has in his matches, win or lose. Yeah, which is impressive for such a young player, such a young individual competitor who's already been at number one in the world. <laughs> sort of fell back just a little bit, has had some injuries, and always continues to have that sort of positive shine on yeah. on his outlook. That is that is one thing that I don't think people talk about that enough. Is is his 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 mentality is is a big deal. Yeah, he has all those tools, but yeah. being positive about your practices, all the hard work you have to do off the court, his new things that he has to do as a world number one, mm-hmm. as a, as a front runner, as a face of the sport. Yeah, that takes a lot away. 
And that's where I see Rafa. Like, maybe he plays more like Federer. There was that one point where he mixed in, like, a tribute to the entire big three and then Murray <laughs> in there at the lob. But you see the Rafa mentality of day by day, it's a process. Even in individual points, what struck me was he would make an error and he would let it all out in a moment, and then he's back to positive and thinking. Like, he's not, you know, getting drugged down by the cruel breaks and cruel irony of tennis. So that stood out to me, as well as the fact you mentioned, like, the fans really are starting to connect to him. Like, he is becoming, I mean, he, he was a superstar in talent, but he's starting to get that reach, that outreach with the fans where he's connecting with people that might not have even followed tennis religiously before. Yeah, he's an extremely likable individual. He, he's His practices had people just mm. surrounding the courts at Indian Wells. Yeah. Um, that's nice to see. That's good for our sport. There was The big worry was, well, when Roger and Rafa and Novak uh, you know, eventually retire, what's going to happen? Will we, will we have star power? Well, that question's <laughs> already been answered. Yeah, tremendous. Uh, you know, I think as good of uh, grounds, you know, people got the event as there's been. So there was a lot of fans there. I think that speaks to not just Alcaraz, but the depth of both the men's and the women's games. It was unfortunate, Daniel Medvedev switching to him, that the streak came to an end the way it did. I think, and, and we can talk about the back and forth, him and the courts, this new rivalry, him versus slow <laughs> courts. But it did feel like there was some fatigue. His, his A-level wasn't there. He didn't make tactical adjustments that maybe we've seen in the past. I think burnout can be real, and when you're on a long winning streak, it's not uncommon that you just don't have it, and these streaks do come to an end in this way. They do come to an end. you got to give yeah. the guy a little credit. Yeah. You have to be tired at some <laughs> point. Three, fi- three championships in a I final. Mean, you win three <laughs> in a row, finals or Masters 1,000. He's played just epic level of tennis, but he plays a lot of defense. It's a lot mm-hmm. of running mm-hmm. for Medi. He's all over the court, defending from way back and then sprinting forward. Think about how many sprints forward. These yeah. guys know that he's that far back. And Dubai, they drop shot him all the time. Dubai to Indian Wells, you can speak to this, is about as night and day as it gets. So adjusting from what he just did to this surface, I know he's not a fan of it in general, but <laughs> he's having to make the big adjustments. And like you said, running, playing so far back, it made sense by Alcaraz, who's probably got the best drop shot going which just forced him to run even more. Exactly true. And I think that that's what I take out of this is actually a positive for Medi. He, he made the finals of Indian Wells on a surface that, on a court that's unbelievably slow. I, in my opinion, too slow. I think they need mm. to speed it up a little bit there. It's become famous for its grit. Okay, <laughs> enough. Let's give it a little bit of speed. But yeah. with that being said, yeah. the surface that Medvedev struggled with the most is, is the clay. So the fact that he played as well as he did in mm-hmm. at Indian Wells this year, I think there's some signs that he might have a better clay court season than what we expect from him. Yeah, that could be that, that could be true. And he actually has momentum now. I mean, and, which is tough to say, but going into last year's clay court season, had the brutal loss in the Australian Open final to Nadal. Didn't really feel like he was getting his footing. Wasn't even allowed to play Wimbledon. So I think having that momentum, it could be a banner clay court season for him. And just the other observation I have is he's just, the best in the in the trophy presentation. Like, <laughs> really? There's nobody his, his better. His comments are fantastic. He's got that dry sense of humor that it's hard. It's, it's kind of in a way, it's really hard not to like him or just appreciate what he brings to the game. Yeah, he's a lot. He's, he, you know, he works so hard on the court and he doesn't give you a whole lot when he's actually on court playing. And then after his matches has these kind of comments that come out of nowhere. So you don't yeah. expect it. So they're even, they're even funnier than they, than they might be. Do you have any issue with him? I mean, I guess it's, it was brought up by John Wertheim today in his article for Sports Illustrated that he doesn't have a problem with. And I think I tend to agree. If you're venting at yourself, it's not as big of a deal versus like causing a stir at the umpire or at the opponent. Yeah, well, first of all, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, yeah, I don't have any problem whatsoever yeah. with venting at, at yourself. <laughs> you know, you, that's yeah. that's on you as long as it's not yeah. disruptive or right. you know not throwing out too many bad words on you know on live TV. Then it that it really is is it's fine. You know, it's it's you got to figure out whatever gets you going. And for Medvedev, that's a little bit of negativity here and there. <laughs> he talks to himself a little bit. Yeah. I used to do a lot of that on the court, <laughs> so I I feel him there. Yeah. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You, you got to figure out what makes you the best yeah. player on on the day. Mm-hmm. He's got that mad scientist vibe out <laughs> he there. Does so. a little bit. But it works. Three three titles on a finals appearance. Tremendous stuff. Was not good enough to beat Carlos Alcaraz. No shame in that. The other notes I have from the men's side is Yannick Sinner. I don't really expect him to just go quietly into the night as like a back supporting cast in the Alcaraz, you know, rivalry that's kind of developing. Mm. I think he played well. 
Alcaraz deserves to be number one in the world, but I think Sinner is going to be ready to make a move here because I thought he played well. I thought he's getting healthy now. The partnership with Darren Cahill seems to be paying off. And I just like his approach more than anything, how he approaches tactically the game of tennis. That was a big win over Taylor Fritz in the round before. So I am buying the stock of Yannick Sinner going forward. Yeah, I've been buying it for a while myself. I like how Sinner plays tennis, plays with a lot of offense. That's sort of how I played tennis. So I, I can get behind that that type of, of play. But he also defends well. Mm-hmm. That forehand out of the corner, boy, is it's a useful shot. That He's Delpo got a lot style, of right? hard work on yeah. it, crushes it through, gets finds some angle, very much like Delpo. Um, the serve for Sinner was the thing that, for me, when he first came on tour, was, was I thought, a little bit lacking. He has improved that. He has a big first serve now, gets a lot of free points on that. Yeah. No real weaknesses for Sinner. Can come forward, adequate volleyer. That's one thing that can maybe improve mm-hmm. a little is just, just a technique on the volleys. But you're right, the mindset is one of, mm-hmm. let's keep getting to work. He's humble about his approach. He's super nice to the fans off the court, so I appreciate that. Um, just a likable person in general. Yeah, he's in that crop of guys I expect to be maybe the top challengers to the Alcarazes of the next generation. I'd ask you as well, what did you think about the performance all the way to the semifinal of Francis Tiafo? Because I thought there was not his best level against Medvedev, some mistakes made, but the fight is just always there, and you have to appreciate that six match points saved, I think maybe even seven, but... What would you evaluate? How would you evaluate Francis Tiafo's performance? Well, the first thing I like is this confidence that he talks with now. He he believes that he belongs there. He believes he can win against anybody he, when he steps foot on the court. And that is the huge change in his his whole mindset. Mm-hmm. He's been doing all that work. And Wayne Fiera has really got him into a good mindset just mentally. But also they've done some hard work on the forehand. It is no longer the liability that it used to be. He used to miss a lot of forehands when he was pushed back. He now makes good decisions on that shot. He's been playing great offense. You see him coming forward a lot. The serve is fantastic. It started at the U.S. Open last year. They've been serving better and better and better. Um, So I I love what I'm seeing from Francis. Yeah, I don't mean this in a derogatory (laughs) way, but I thought thought Cam Norrie, like that match in the quarterfinals, that is like a true test of patience and professional-ism as a tennis player because Cam's going to make you work out there. He's going to frustrate you. For the way Francis won that match, straight sets kind of comfortably, that showed me a lot because I think a younger, maybe less experienced Tiafo might have gone too big too early. I think the last time we were on this show, we talked about his forehand mm-hmm. and how he's done better. You brought up the point he's done some things with it where he's not going for broke, essentially. Yeah, he's not going for broke. And the, and the shot that, that has been a tricky one is almost that ball right at the middle when he when he sort of pushed back. He'd clip the tape a lot on it. Now he hits those balls a little bit more spin. He can easily Smart, put that yeah. spin on it. And he uses his great speed. Now... Cam Nori absolutely mm-hmm. is a tough test these days for anyone. Mm-hmm. He's he's come up with some amazing wins, has that win over Alcaraz mm-hmm. a few weeks before Indian Wells. Um, I like the matchup for Tiafo against Nori, and the reason for that is that that flat backhand is not going to affect Francis mm-hmm. as much when he drives it cross court, and Francis's backhand and speed is good enough to deal with that heavy forehand that mm-hmm. we see Cam Nori hitting so well against so many opponents. Hard to believe that was his first Masters 1000 final. Got to believe it's not going to be his last, so props to Francis Tiafo. More with Jan Michael Gamble here on Tennis Channel Insight. And got to talk about the women. And it was a rematch of the Australian Open Finals with the winner reverse. Elena Rabakina defeats Serena Sabalenka in straight sets. Epic tiebreak in the first set. Sabalenka with a lot of double faults. Unfortunately, that bad habit came back. But for Rabakina, she wins Wimbledon, comes onto the scene, and people are wondering who she is, if this is going to last. No one will ask that question for the foreseeable future. This is a major player that just continues to get better and continues to show up, Jam Michael, in big matches. Yeah, I think she likes playing the big matches. Uh, I, I do think a lot of people are going to st- continue to wonder who she is. She <laughs> does not very vocal with all of that information. <laughs> and and on the court is is simply all business. That's the way that she takes care yeah. of her, her tennis is very straightforward, doesn't show you a lot of emotion. Don't think we're going to get a lot of it out of her, and that's <laughs> just fine. Yeah. She is who she is. Um, I think like your sister that final has that carry has that part now. It's like a balance. <laughs> you know, you yeah. you you, you got to be your true self out right, there. That's right. something that I learned. Uh, you know, at times tried to temper my huge amount of intensity that I would play with, and when I was more robotic, it didn't work for me. I couldn't mm-hmm. I couldn't play tennis my best tennis. So you know, I was sort of the opposite of uh, Rybakina. But there's no reason for her to to get out of that mold. It's now yeah. you know won her so many matches in in a sl- slam and now a Masters. 1000 title or WT 1000 title and I think she's going to keep on winning she has a huge game the big yeah. serve the big ground strokes um, you know we are going to get it done a lot of days yeah I don't think I've ever seen an athlete in any sport 
celebrate more modestly when they win something than a later Ravakana. <laughs> this goes up and that's kind yeah, of, that's, that's it might it. not though. It might yeah. not. She might just walk up there. <laughs> Sometimes she might not, but the confidence is a quiet confidence, but it's there. And look in the semi, she beat Iga handily, which is an impressive feat. If ever there is one, she's now two and zero against her. Right. And in the press conference leading up to it, they asked her about the mask and she imagined she's like, I beat her before. I feel like I can do it again. And she just went out there and did it. Yeah, so there she's is. pretty blunt with some of her responses. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's, you can respect that. Yeah. The one, another thing that I respect about Rebakana is there's some secret work that she's been doing. Mm -hmm. She's moving better than she's ever moved. I don't know if people are talking yeah. about that. You talk about the big ball striking. She's, she's hitting the ball well. Would you, she's say it's like, well. would you say it's, I mean, it's, it's her height and her size. It looks maybe a little awkward. I agree. She's a great mover, but the, the longer strides, her height and her size, it doesn't look as natural as maybe just a natural smaller. No, I don't division. think it's, I don't think it's natural. I think yeah. she's put in the work. Yeah. So she's trying to get the, it's the change of direction for mm -hmm. Ibaka. And it used to be actually, I thought a weakness and it's no longer a weakness to exploit. Right. You can still get it, but you have to work for mm -hmm. it now. Um, so the best players might get there. Um, I, I don't. I still wouldn't say she's a great mover, right, but, but she's now she's now a good mover. Yeah. And and with her power from the baseline and the serve, it's getting things done. First strike tennis was remarkable, <laughs> and I want to talk about Sabalenka because up until that last match, I mean, it was still another great run. Just handled Coco Golf. Beats Sakari down as well, and then loses a tough match to a very good opponent. The double fault issues come up, and it's what a lot of people will talk about with her, unfortunately, as long as it's there. I actually felt like, and, and this is where I'll defer to you, I felt like Robakina was putting a lot of pressure on her, and it kind of forced her to go a little bigger than she might normally would have. Yeah, I think so. I think Robakina has a good return to serve. She takes yeah. the big cuts at those returns and gets good depth. Yeah, Sabalenka does not like it being pushed back off the baseline. She likes to be the one doing the dictating from the baseline. So when that's happening, she's going to have a little bit yeah. of trouble. There's like nobody really else that could. I mean, I, I don't want to say nobody else, but this is rarefied air to be able to do that. To yeah, Sabalenka. It, it's, it's difficult to do that to her these days. Yeah. Uh, Plushkova a player like that can do it where they can take care of their serve on, and yeah. then, and then hit the ball hard and deep. Um, but it's, it's not easy. And so that was happening. And, and, you know, yeah, some second serve issues might be a bit of the problem. She has improved the serve. She's mm -hmm. improved sort of everything. Even her shot choices have gotten better. Sablink is still for me, one of the ones to beat in Miami. Certainly. Yeah, you're just going to have bad matches. You're going to lose in finals. You're not going to win every week. It happens. There's, this is another run to the final following up, you know, what she's done. So nothing to be ashamed of there. Before I get to Ega and kind of lead into that, do you see women's tennis right now going or kind of pushing towards maybe a, a big three? Are those three ladies, Sablanka, Rabak, and Ega, are they kind of separating themselves from the field? It seems like a little bit. It does seem like they are starting to do a lot of winning and, you know, Obviously, winning slams each one of them, and uh, and Fiontek a, a few. So, um, you know, Iga's still sort of the one to beat. Unfortunately, she's not going to be playing in Miami. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that, but uh, um, so she's she's still the one to beat. But there are some players that are sort of sneaking up on her a little bit. Yeah. So it's it's going to be fun to see if that does happen. It would be great. We need we need rivalries in the sport. We need rivalries, and we also need that. A level, this is the standard, get with it or you won't, you know? So I think <laughs> right. if you have a tier, that'll force the rest of the field to have to raise their game instead of the, you know, instead of the approach where anybody can win, which is great. And it's good to see the underdog stories, but I love that top tier, you know, that top standard and, you know, it forces players to get better. Ika did lose that match to, to Rubakina and, you know, talked about the rib injury after and you know, what, what's going on there is not playing in Miami. It's unfortunate what's happening there. And just in the Rabakina match itself, and this is now twice, which we've said, I wonder if, and I dare say, is this maybe just a matchup problem for her? Because her style of play, how she plays, works flawlessly against basically everybody else. But Rabakina has found a way to turn the pressure and, and put the pressure on Ego, which I don't really think you could say about other maybe than Sabalenka, anybody else. Well, it, the, the tricky thing is, is to rush that forehand. That mm. She has a little bit of a wind-up on the forehand, uh, yeah. Shantek. And so if you can rush her on that side, she doesn't like it as much. She didn't like the hard courts as much. Has adapted her game quite nicely to the mm -hmm. hard courts, I must say. Obviously, uh, you know, having now great success on the hard. Um, that took her a little bit of time. But it's still, if there, she doesn't really have a weakness. She's a fantastic athlete. No, yeah. but, there's, but if there is one thing to try and exploit is to get it deep into the forehand, sometimes deep right yeah. at her in the middle of the court, 
Um, now that match, she was, she was just it, it, she didn't look like her normal self right. in that in that match against Rybakina, and and then you hear about the rib, and that yeah. sort of tells a little bit of the story. I, I wonder, and, and it's I mean obviously it's fine to point out weaknesses. You can even say with Federer and Nadal in the matchup, what each side was trying to do and to sure. exploit. It seems like, and I wonder too. She hasn't had the history because she's been so dominant of playing a lot of close matches, of being in tight matches where she's getting pushed. And also, her plan A has worked so well <laughs> that true. I wonder if, okay, now, and again, this could be a good thing. Now you got to have a plan B when you play the very best. Yeah, maybe back off the line a little bit, just hit the ball a little mm -hmm. heavier on the forehand side. If somebody's doing that to you, certainly she can. Rybakina was doing a great job, though, of taking care of the balls in the middle of the court. Those approach mm -hmm. shots, those balls coming forward. There's a lot of times put away types of shots. And, and she has a serve that's good enough that's going to get her a few free points. So that yeah. that, that is a matchup that, well, it, it does it does sort of favor Rybakina a little bit. It's exciting, it it, it's exciting to think that we've got these <laughs> potential rivalries here. And, and again, maybe another player can emerge from outside those three. Rybakina up to seven. Would have liked to see her get those Wimbledon points and be even higher, but at least the ranking's trending in the right direction. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> is. She deserves to be in the top 10. Uh, it's, it, the whole Wimbledon thing's a whole different story, but yeah. uh, hopefully this year that won't be the case. So she's at seven. The last thing on Iga, got to give a shout out to her and Ben Shelton for being the new official on athletes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Roger Federer is going to end up, I mean, he's just making all the right business decisions because they're coming. They've kind of infiltrated the U.S. I just want to give a shout out to them. Switching sponsors and, and ongoing into the tennis sphere with two of the the premier female tennis player and one of the rising stars in the men's game for sure. Yeah, I've seen the shoes. They look pretty good. At first, I didn't know they made a tennis shoe. Haven't tried the shoes out myself, so don't know how good they are. But if, if you have top players wanting to throw the shoes on, then, then they're probably a pretty dang good shoe. Yeah, it's good Federer can make a little more money. It's like good, <laughs> yeah, Roger needs able it. To. Oh, it's uh, nice. You know what? If he brings it to tennis, I think it's kind of cool that, he, that yeah. he would do that. Well, I just want to look at the Miami field now as we kind of get into the picture of where we're at. And on the women's side, no ego, as we said. There's some opportunities to be had. Uh, obviously, Rabak and Sablank are going to pace the field. But what other contenders are you looking at? We actually had a pretty good one today with Andrescu and Raducanu, with BB taking that in three tight sets. But who else outside of those two co-favorites would you say can make a move on the women's side? I think there's some Americans that can have some great results. Jessica Bagula has been playing some top tennis. I think she can make some good, mm. good, a good run in Miami. You know, you have a little bit of a faster court. You have Shelby and Sloan playing each other right it's now. I think one. that's a fun match. Sloan's won the tournament before. Could she turn it on? You never know. Yeah, that's a good one. I would also say, and, and Jesse's a good choice. She played some tough physical matches in the heat. Uh, Petra Kvitova, who beat Jesse, faster court. I think she's. I've always felt like her game could age kind of well like how she plays into her 30s could last longer than most i think it can last a long time that serve is yeah. always going to be a weapon the faster courts like you said it's going to suit her it's going to suit those ground strokes if she's consistent enough mm -hmm. also carolina plishkova is starting to play better tennis again herself so yeah. th that could be interesting she's been playing sort of better and better since the injury last year the confidence seems to be coming back a little bit um, so it's gonna be interesting to see if she can also have a great result so it's going to be Sakari versus Andrescu, which should be a heck of a match in the you know, battle. starting out. I wonder with Maria Sakari, because I obviously love the fight, the fitness level is always there. She is a pretty solid bet in most tournaments to make a decent run, but it seems like that cliff is the semifinals. Do you think it's between the ears, or do you think there's some tactical adjustments that she could make against the very best? I think it's it's sometimes in the big moments, just a little bit of consistency is what is it costs her some matches. She does sometimes play against opponents who might be better on the day. But you're right. I, I see soccer in the draw, and I say, well, probably at least make the quarters or semis yeah. in this event. I mean, she she has the fitness level to get through very difficult situations. Um, for me, it's it's a little bit of the shot making. She gets irritated at herself for making poor decisions sometimes on shots, and sometimes I agree with her. It's like I'm irritated too. It's like, come yeah. on, don't make, don't miss that ball. Yeah. Um, where you could stay in the rally just a little bit longer because she she does have the ability if she wants to to outlast opponents because yeah. she's such a good mover, and again can can be out there all day long if she must. But I do like the offensive nature for her from her too. So it's just yeah. bring the targets in a slight bit on those big points. And I think it would be a, a big difference. It's hard to believe one title in her career. Like it just doesn't seem right. Given how yeah. And I think that, been. you know, you see that, yeah. you know, how good she is and that, yeah. and that makes people say, is it between the ears? Yeah. Well, it's between the ears. If you're making tough decisions that you yeah. shouldn't make. So 
the answer is mm-hmm. yes. I, I don't think that it's because she's getting nervous or tight. No. I actually think, I, I think she's suited better than most to deal with Andrescu, the game, and also just how long the physical these matches are. Because you know Andrescu is going to be in the fight. And she's, I mean, I've always thought Andrescu, and I mean this as a comment, is a disruptor. Like how she plays is to get you out of your game. And I mean that, you know, glowingly. I think she's one of the best at that. She can still hit it strong. She was actually serving really well today in part of the match. I, I noticed that. I actually, yeah. we called part of that yeah. match today, Leaf and I. And uh, I did, I thought, well, she's serving better than, than she's been serving. So that's a, that's a good thing. It's a good news for, you know, fans of hers, the arm problems that she's had, Bianca, for, for a while now. So that maybe the, this, if the serve continues to get better, that means the arm yeah. is, in, is in good shape. One other thing from that match, and I just got to have your comment on this, Emma Raducanu, and, and I like that she's progressing and getting back to that level, but I thought it was, I'll say peculiar, and then toss over to you, the 35% comment. She said, I'm at 35% of my potential. I thought that was a very specific low number. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little low, probably. Yeah. <laughs> 35, I'm like, where did you come up with that number in particular? And I get, she was trying to say she's got so much more to grow, but... That's, yeah, 35% of your potential. It's like, wow, there's a lot more to get to. She gets to 70%. Watch out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that is probably a little bit low. I did feel like uh, Radu Kano was more offensive today. She was returning extremely well, uh, even as well as, yeah. as Bianca was serving. Um, Emma was right on it and, di- and did a lot of good from the returns. Mm-hmm. It, w- it was her own service games, I thought, yeah. that was the issue today, especially in the third set. I mean, we've talked about it. It's good that there's starting to be some stability with her. I think the, the base is starting to get set up. And now, I mean, she's... But, you know, just going to have to grind, going to have to play a lot of tennis, do well in some of the lower events and then work her way up. It's a process. It's, yeah. You know, her story, this fairy tale yeah. story of winning the U S open as a, as a qualifier is just, is sort of beyond belief. And to yeah. think about all the things that happened to her after all the opportunities that she needed to take, yeah. that she needed to go out there and do all those things. And it's distracting whether, whether she needed to do it, do it or not. That's the reality. It took away from her tennis and, and she's sort of coming back, I think, to doing all the hard work and, and the, the mental focus. She seems to have, very importantly, her team in place now, Emma. Yeah. She she went through a whole coaching phase of trying to figure out the right people, the right you know yeah. whole team to have in place there. Now that it's there, that mental stability can go forward. Let's figure out strategies that can make me win matches. Mm-hmm. Let's figure out what I'm why I'm winning or losing matches, mm-hmm. and 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 try to edge that thirty percent up to forty, and from yeah. there, you know, even more. So, yeah. um, that's that's what needs to happen, and it seems like it's going in the right, like you said, in the right place. Which, yeah, that part's good to see. Uh, hopefully, you know, Coco Golf at home can have a good event. And the other player, too, is Anj Jabor on that comeback trail from the injury. Has said it's a process. I've been open that she probably wouldn't have played Indian Wells if it wasn't such a big, important event. So mm-hmm. i like to see those two players progress. I think the game really needs them to be in the mix. And, you know, they have a lot to offer on and off the court. Absolutely. I mean, Owen Jabur is one of my favorite players to watch and, and always keep a watch on Coco Goff is, I mean, she's going to have her breakthrough at some point. A lot of people saying that she's probably tired of hearing people say that she wants to just get on and play the tennis. Yeah. Um, continues to play at a high, high level almost every single week. Mm. Um, so it, her having a breakthrough would not surprise me in the sl- in slightest. That final step is just so hard. Like she's got, she's f- so far ahead of schedule. She's where she needs to be, but that last five, six players to get better than it's, I mean, you're talking about the best in the world at what they do. Exactly. A couple more things with Jan Michael Gamble looking at the men's uh, draw and men's Miami open. I did like the Medvedev comment where he said the courts are actually fast, so he's not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a direct quote from Daniil there, but he comes in this event with momentum, obviously, and a better surface to his liking. Alcaraz, Sinner again, Maybe a guy like Taylor Fritz. How do you see like the the favorite, the top crop shaping out to be? Do you think they'll be chalk, or do you think we'll see some upsets? I think it's interesting. You know, these these big courts, or these faster courts, I should say, are going to fa- are going to favor the big servers. And you see John Isner winning the event, making the finals again. Hubie Hercotch mm. likes to play on these here. courts. He's got a big big serve himself. His center's been in the final before. So, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised any of those guys moving deep in the draws. You have a very confident Francis Tiafo. Um, yeah, it's uh, for it's it's Alcaraz and Medvedev. They're obviously the right. they're they're the well earned one and two. You know, kind of uh-huh. people that are that are sort of there. Holger Runa yeah. really have a good result. Hasn't good. really had the results that I kind of expected that this year. He ended the year so well last year. Yeah, but there's always you know going to be the player that we didn't expect that kind of got. 
can come through. You know, Ego winning it notwithstanding and Roger Federer, the last men's player to win the Sunshine Double, it's such a tremendous accomplishment, I think, because of how different the surfaces are, how mm-hmm. different the events are and what, what you have to do. So there will be pressure on Alcaraz to back this up, and the draw does look a little harder. You know, having to deal with, I mean, Murray or, or Cressy is going to be his third-round matchup, and then, it gets, and then it gets a little tougher. We're looking at Tommy Paul, a guy who beat him last year in Canada. Yep. So Tommy Paul being the type of player that love his game was right there with Felix, but it feels like he takes your legs out from under you. Like even if you survive him, you're going to be a little tired in the next match. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Tommy Paul, one of the fastest <laughs> movers on the tour and so fit, can stay out there in the rallies, has done all that improvement on his forehand. I love that as a weapon now these mm-hmm. days. Um, he's, he's a contender pretty much every week as well. It's so nice to see so many Americans that are contenders. This could be a good tournament also for Shelton. Yeah. It's a fast surface. The, well, you know what? It's the big serve. He's going to hold serve. For the guy, for sure. Yep. The thing is with him, he's got Hubie early. And right. I was looking at that matchup and it's like, if he gets by that, then it's like house money. Here we go. Yeah, it's but, an ugly matchup because yeah. Hubie will put those returns back in play. He defends ex- just exceptionally, even on fast courts, mm-hmm. and he passes well. We see Shelton come forward, which is what makes him so much fun to watch, but he's going to have to dig out some tough volleys against Hubie for sure. What would you say as a, you know, as a former player, as a tennis purist, to the, to the I guess, lay people to say it, Shelton's serve, what makes it just so dangerous already, that lefty serve, the height, the, the kick it gets, like what makes it so dangerous? Well, the, the kick is, is, it has like this other spin. It's almost like sometimes at, a t- at some points, American twist, it goes, it doesn't go where you think mm. it will go. But it's just, uh, the first serve for me is, you know, you expect a lefty, and if, you, if he's playing a righty, to get the ball into the backhand pretty easily. So that's, mm-hmm. that's up the tee in the deuce court. You mm-hmm. have that slider. It's going to yeah. move away from you. And then the one out wide in the, in the ad court is a devastating serve, which you have to cover. A lot of lefties can hit those serves. Probably not quite as well as Shelton can hit them, uh, but they can hit those serves. So the thing for a good lefty, and the best one that comes to mind for me is Wayne Arthurs. If okay. you know Wayne Arthurs' yeah. serve, Wayne Arthurs had a serve that you simply could not read. Definitely a he top could 10 slide server you. ever. He could, yes, he is. He could slide <laughs> you, and then he could pronate and hit it out wide in the deuce and down the T in the ad <laughs> just as easy. Yeah. So it was impossible to read it. And I was one of the returners. I did not like to guess. I found myself actually guessing against Arthur, but I don't like to admit. <laughs> but uh, there was no other way, way to really yeah. get a, a look at him. And um, Shelton is starting to, see, I'm starting to see that. He can get up and, and, and pronate, hit the other spots that you don't expect. Yeah. And that makes him tricky. Plus, then he also throws in those kick serves. And that's just, it's a lot to deal with. He's in that sweet spot of looking great already, but still, you see the areas he can improve. So the potential to get better. It's like that clay that you can mold. It seems like it's going to be a fun process for him. Yeah, he really seems like an extremely coachable guy. I love how well he volleys. I love how well he reads the plays. Yeah. When it's, when a ball is floating, there you, you turn your head, and there he is at the net, taking it out of the air, right. taking p- time away from his opponents. He has a, also, you know, you, you look at the big sir, big forehand mm-hmm. that he possesses. He can also throw a lot of spin in that forehand. But yeah. the thing that is sort of tricky is that the backhand, which when I first saw it is one of those kind of, it's almost like a backhand shove. A lot of players these days have a yeah. backhand like that. I, I didn't like the look of that mm-hmm. from a lot of players. It's a very good tool for him. Yeah. It keeps the ball low. He moves the ball around the court and sets up foreign opportunities. Plus, returns well off of that shot. He's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, one of the players that we didn't talk about, unfortunately, is dealing with the injury stuff and who knows what else. But Sitsipas is kind of not where he needs to be, and he's open about it. And you know, it's it's unfortunate for a lot of reasons because he's such a good player, but I think this is an opportunity. I hate to say it without Djokovic and Nadal here, mm. but he could be and should be in a lot of ways one of these guys. It just hasn't quite happened because of the shoulder injury for Stefanos. Yeah, we should we should be talking about Stefanos, yeah. certainly, as, as, as a contender to win tournaments. He just made the finals in Australia, you yeah. know, second slam final. Um, it's unfortunate that he's injured, but he's out there playing. That's the thing. Like so once you, you take the you court, know, you can't really. I, I have a know. hard time. I had yeah. some injuries myself. I don't. Yeah. I have, have a hard time feeling sorry for him. I don't feel yeah. sorry for him. If he steps foot on the court, then play. You know, and if you can't play, yeah. then then right. don't. That that's sort of my mentality when you look at that mm-hmm. because everybody has to deal with injuries, and if you if you mm-hmm. go out there, you got to do it. So if mm-hmm. he if he can find a way to win, he still certainly has the tools to beat most of the players out there. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem to be driving through the backhand quite as well. We're seeing him slice a little bit more. So that is sort of the tell that it is affecting him in, yeah. in the rallies. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's still good enough to beat most of the players. 
insane athlete and an ability to make <clears throat> tremendous shots. I think he's somebody that even at eighty percent, like you said, he can beat most of the players. Yeah, he certainly can. Move. I also wanted to shout out another guy who's working here and has done well, Andre Rublev. We'll see what he has to offer another player. So there's there's no shortage of contenders here. Yeah, I Rublev's think he, he's yeah. one of my most one of the most fun guys on tour to watch, and these yeah. courts are going to help him. Yeah. They could also hurt him if if you can rush him a lot on that on that you know on the ground strokes get the ball deep you never know but it's that's not what Kyrgios did to him last year it was it was a quick exit for him and he can be temperamental I think it's fair to say <laughs> so you know if it goes south it, it goes south but uh, so it sounds like we're looking at kind of that middle I mean real, realistically I would say it's safe to say Alcaraz might be in a class of his own right now but you've got eight to ten outstanding players that wouldn't surprise you if they're in the final if not winning it absolutely and i'll tell you i, I love a good upset so yeah. I'm, I'm often rooting for the underdogs all right well before we go just a couple of quick hitting things one being i got to give a shout out to what's becoming maybe the greatest one of the greatest women's doubles teams of all time in siniakova and creature oh. they just keep winning this run is like a martina run which shout out to her by the way for being you know being cancer free we love to hear that but but it is fitting it's like this doubles team is just outstanding these last three years. They haven't lost. Yeah, it's great. First of all, it is great to see Martina yeah. back in the chair, calling yeah. matches and uh, and cancer free. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Krajcikova and Siniakova, just it is so fun to watch them. Barbora is actually one of my favorite players to watch in the WTA tour, just in general. Period. Play tennis. I love her sort of outlook, how yeah. she approaches her matches how she plays between points, her mental stability. She's such a great athlete. Yeah. <laughs> Loads up on that big forehand and always is very positive. So yeah. very easy person to to cheer for and and, mm -hmm. and get behind. I uh, I feel bad because it's the tail end. We're at 35 minutes or so. And she'd be someone I would add to that big three discussion earlier. I think if she's on, I think she could disrupt. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I, I was had these other names yeah. in it and yeah. I should have thought mm -hmm. of Craig Cavill. It should have been right in, yeah. the, in the first, you know, few digits in my hand and uh, so <laughs> Two, you know there's so many great yeah. players it's yeah. it's it's tricky right now there's so many great yeah. players in the draw that you, you know you can pick your you can do a, a bunch of picking and 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 might come out with yeah. with a name that will work originality and uniqueness the way she plays i just really love watching her play singles or doubles so great to see and, and the very last thing we have to salute uh, the end of the rafa streak 912 straight weeks <laughs> in the top 10 uh, stretching 18 years and nothing lasts forever. It's unfortunate that it had to end, but another just incomprehensible, you know, accolade by the big three and by Rafael Nadal, what he was able to do, that consistency is just, it's out of this world. There's no other way to say it. It is out of this world. That's uh, <laughs> I mean, just thinking of that many weeks in the top 10, most players would be happy to be in the top 10 at all. Yeah. I would have loved to gather. I was close. Uh, <laughs> This, you know, Rafa has been so good for so long, and, uh, and injury is the only thing that's really going to set him back. I, I I looked at this from a couple different perspectives, and the one that stood out was thinking he had had injuries before. That shows you how successful he was when he came back. Like, when he missed stretches, he came back and had to play well to still be ranked pretty high, and he did it. He wouldn't. He, he's there's just nobody like him and uh we're at the point where we were with Feder, where it's just appreciate him as long as he's there he, he's going to make his own decision on his own terms but it's just remarkable what this guy's done for so long it certainly helps to win or be at least in the finals of a slam <laughs> yeah. every single year that yeah. you're on tour it's a i mean uh, since his early days at least uh he's continued to have those amazing results and it's just been it's been a joy to, to be a part of watching that it really has well jam michael gamble appreciate you as always coming on tennis channel inside and you're always welcome we'll see if uh, our you know thoughts our intuitions on how miami <laughs> goes and uh, we can edit out the bad stuff but no yeah. seriously thanks for coming on the show as always absolutely thanks for having me Mitch.